I'm rebuilding a 1989 Kawasaki X2 personal watercraft jet ski. Today is about day two. I've removed the engine because I had what is believed to be a lean seizure caused by a crankcase leak. I've got the engine sitting here under this plastic bag. And the front cylinder uh, ate its piston rings over here on the side and also on the back, which makes me suspicious of the crankshaft itself. So I'll be inspecting my crankshaft fairly closely. The bearings actually look pretty good. You can see them in there in between the two copper-colored uh, pieces of the uh, of the crank arm there. I also need to do some work to the exhaust here because the head pipe, this is the head pipe here and this is the exhaust manifold here, this lower part. This line right here is where they meet and I've stripped two of the bolts and they actually uh, sheared out and this third one right here is completely stuck so I'll probably have to drill all three out to get them out. Uh, this could probably use some paint, this could use some paint because these stains don't want to come off. Uh, so I'll uh, paint that up and make it nice. The engine bay here is a mess, I just started cleaning it up and that white area is eh, not even that clean and I've already used a little bit of carburetor cleaner on it uh, which helped a lot but not enough. Uh, drive shaft looks good, here's my rubber drive coupler and this whole thing just slides back and forth. So long as you get those uh, gears in the propeller, it's, uh, it's hooked up and that's all it is. The engine, as it hooks in right here, doesn't actually hook up to it. It's just so long as the engine is mounted on these four engine mounts, it uh, doesn't let that drive shaft move back and forth and that's, that's how it stays in there. I've also got one broken motor mount right here uh, that I uh, think I'll probably need to replace. Uh, a lot of these lines are not in real good cosmetic condition, so I'll probably change those. Uh, you can see in here I've got the stock water box, uh, which I'll probably take that out and drill it, but I do like it to be kind of quiet, so I, I won't be uh, replacing that with an aftermarket water box, even though I have one. I, I don't like the uh, the noise. I think it sounds annoying. This here just needs a little bit of cleaning. And I'll probably replace all these fuel lines with something uh, fancy and new, maybe some nice uh, translucent blue ones. And there's there's just a ton of gunk in here. I mean, every every surface is covered in crap. This is where the uh, previous owner had a bilge installed, but uh, as you can see it's on the lower part of the hull and it's always submerged and that makes it real tough for it to clear out. What I'd like to do is install a bilge switch up here on the handlebar uh, and have have a bilge outlet maybe somewhere around, around up here so that it'll uh, uh, not sink the ski if the bilge fills, fills full of water and uh, draws more water in, as happened to my stand-up ski. Now in the back, uh, previous owner had glued this on. I guess that's an all right place for it. This might need to be replaced. These wires are all just a mess. I mean, uh, this is not done tidily at all. I also have a 44 millimeter Makuni SBN uh, carburetor to put on, uh, which is uh, supposed to make this quite a bit faster. And I have a stock head that's been milled to allow for about 175 psi compression, uh, which is uh, the, the highest you'd want to go for running pump gas at about 91 octane. I'll be running 93 octane. Uh, but it's good to have a, a little bit of a buffer in there in case the gas gets a few weeks old on me or anything like that.